Welcome everyone to today's announcement on making adoption more affordable for Albertans. I will invite the Minister of Children's Services, Mickey Emery, to take the podium when he's ready. Hello and good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us. And thank you very much to Erica and the kind folks at Adoption Options for hosting us today. It is a pleasure to be here on Treaty 6 territory in the heart of Edmonton's downtown with my colleague, MLA Cyril Turton for Spruce Grove, Stony Plain, to share the good news that Alberta is becoming a national leader in supporting adoption. There are plenty of generous Albertans who would love to start or expand their families by adopting a child. And now we have 27 children in the government system alone who are waiting to be placed in a loving, permanent home. But there are significant barriers keeping these families from coming together. Alberta is home to many passionate advocates for affordable, accessible adoption, and they've made it clear that changes are needed. One of the most common concerns we hear is that the system is inefficient and complicated. It is difficult to navigate. And I'm happy to tell you that we are working on some of the initiatives to help reduce some of those barriers. For example, we recently reduced the time it takes to complete a government home study by a month and a half. We've also worked on a number of initiatives to improve the process, including grant to agencies to help them post, adopt, help them post adoptive parents' profiles online. I'm proud of the work that we've done so far, and I'm glad to say that we are just getting started. Another key concern that we've been hearing from parents and advocates is that adoption is financially out of reach for many families. And that's why I'm pleased to be here today to announce a $4 million investment over the next three years to help reduce some of those barriers. Because building forever families shouldn't be a financial burden to Albertans. Our government will be lowering the cost of pressures on current and prospective adoptive families in three distinct ways. First, we will make the system more equitable and we will subsidize the cost of private adoptions through licensed agencies in Alberta by providing a one-time $6,000 payment to parents looking to adopt. Starting this fall, this subsidy will be available to families earning less than $180,000 per year so that many families can afford to grow their families through adoption. Second, we'll be increasing the Provincial Adoption Expenses Tax Credit by $4,000 to help cover the cost associated with the adoption process. Families in Alberta can claim this credit whether they've chosen to adopt locally or internationally. And this increase is retroactive to January 1st, 2023, which means families can claim it on their 2024 tax returns. And finally, also starting this fall, I'm very pleased to introduce a new benefit program, the very first of its kind in Canada, to cover medical expenses for children who were adopted within this province. If a family adopts a child in Alberta and they don't have a benefit plan or they can't add their child to an existing plan, the government of Alberta will step in to cover the ch child's dental, drug, vision, and other supplemental benefits. We understand that medical expenses can be very stressful for a lot of families, especially when the children they've chosen to adopt has complex medical needs. To ease that stress in an inclusive way, we're offering this coverage to children who have been adopted through private licensed agencies as well as those who have been adopted from government care. We are investing in a better system so that no child misses out on the opportunity to have a loving family because of their medical needs or other financial burdens. Through Budget 2023, we are limiting expenses and unnecessary burdens so that more Albertans will be able to experience the joy and the happiness of being a parent. And more children will receive the lifelong love and support of a family who treasures them. I know that there is more work to be done to make sure that adoption is a smooth, efficient, and accessible process for parents, for agencies, and of course, above all else, 
for the kids who are the center of it all. We'll keep looking at ways to reduce red tape and enhance what we've already put into place. I look forward to hearing on the feedback of these new supports that we're rolling out this year so that we can make sure that they are as effective as possible. In just a moment, we're going to hear from MLA Cyril Turton, whose advocacy has truly led the way on a lot of this work. MLA Cyril Turton has shared a lot of his personal stories with many of us, both in the House and all across the province. He has generously agreed to share his family's adoption journey with us today. I can't thank him enough for his tireless efforts to amplify the voices of families who are calling for better access to adoption in Alberta. I'm also excited to hear from Jenna and Eric, who have adopted four children from government care and provided them with loving and stable homes. These wonderful parents have an amazing story to share, and I hope that their story inspires many more Albertans to adopt children in, in care. Thank you very much. I'll now invite Cyril Turton to the stand to say a, a few words. Well, thank you very much, Minister Amory, and thank you everyone that's here today. It's an absolute privilege to be here celebrating an announcement that has years of passionate advocacy behind it. In 2019, on behalf of my constituents and many others who are bravely pushing for change, I was proud to bring forward Motion 501 in the Legislature, which called for a more streamlined adoption process that would present fewer barriers to adoption here in Alberta. Since then, government has done a lot of work to eliminate red tape and improve the system for parents and children. I'm deeply grateful to you, Minister Amory, for the wonderful work you and everyone at Children's Services has done to make adoption a viable choice for more families here in our province. I'm confident our government's investment is going to make an enormous difference for families who thought adoption would never be possible for them due to financial constraints. My wife and I have been through the adoption process ourselves, so this issue is very close to my heart. We discovered firsthand the many challenges that families can face, whether in the government system or through a private agency. After several years of trying to adopt within Alberta, my family had to go through, uh, through to the international route. And there are a lot of parents out there longing to welcome a child into their homes. Parents who desperately wanted to simply grow their families, but simply cannot afford it or are worried about the complexity and uncertainty of the process. I know this because several of them have reached out to me directly and told me their stories. And I've seen the look in their eyes when they talk about how long and complicated this can be. And at least one family I chatted with gave up altogether um, just due to simple frustration. I can only imagine how painful that was for them. After years of meeting with social workers and investing thousands of dollars, and it absolutely broke my heart. So I couldn't be more thrilled that Alberta's government is taking decisive, meaningful action on an issue that has broken too many hearts and kept too many children waiting for the loving homes that they deserve. As an adoptive parent, I'm relieved to see the enhanced medical coverage for children, which I hope will set an example for the rest of Canada, because as Minister Amory has mentioned, no other province is doing that so far. Now, there are many unknowns when parenting children, as many of us know. Knowing that there's extra, to, extra support to manage a child's medical needs, whatever those might be, is going to lift an absolutely huge weight off children or off of the shoulder, family shoulders, and that's why I'm so pleased to see the subsidy and increased tax credit. Adoption can be a financially onerous process, and I'm always in favor of putting money back into Albertans pockets whenever we can. Growing your family through adoption is more rewarding than I could ever describe. I can't wait to see more parents receiving the support they need to become forever families. And I look forward to hearing their stories, and I'm committed to ensuring their voices are heard in the legislature as we continue to improve the adoption process and experience for all Albertans. Thank you very much for your time, and now I'd like to introduce Erica Moore from Adoption Options to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Amory, for providing more details about adoption supports for prospective adoptive parents. And thank you, Emily Turton, for sharing your journey through adoption. 
It's a pleasure for Adoption Options to host this announcement today. The adoption supports that the government has shared in more detail are very meaningful for prospective adoptive parents across all of Alberta. These changes are something we have long been hoping for, so today is truly a day to celebrate. Since initial news of these changes were mentioned in the Budget 2023 news conference, we have had many prospective adoptive parents reach out to us, those who have been considering adoption, but who were previously unsure if they had the financial resources to build a family through adoption. Infertility and fertility loss is a deeply personal and emotional journey. It can be tremendously painful when something seemingly straightforward, like choosing to start a family, can become a road plagued with medical tests and procedures, expensive fertility treatments that may not work, and the hope of having a family seemingly out of reach. When faced with further costs associated with adoption, the road towards parenthood can be long and overwhelming, and for some, insurmountable. Minister Amory, you are clearing the hurdles to make that dream and yearning for parenthood a possible option for many. And on their behalf, I would like to say thank you. Now, families considering adoption of a child with substantial medical or complex needs will no longer need to look at their monthly budget to see if they can make it work. The government is ensuring that those medical costs will be covered. Increasing the adoption expenses credit creates equity for families by ensuring that those pursuing adoption in Alberta are on equal footing to prospective parents in other areas of the country. New parents will be able to claim thousands more on their taxes, which will help relieve financial pressures associated with adoption. And finally, with the provision of $6,000 to assist prospective adoptive parents with adoption-related costs, the government has ensured that finances will not be the main barrier in their dream of becoming parents. The supports you announced today will have direct and positive implications for prospective adoptive parents, birth parents, and their children in Alberta. Again, on their behalf, I want to say thank you. I would now like to invite Jenna Hoff to the podium to share a few words. Thank you, Erica for sharing how much this news means to prospective adoptive parents working with licensed agencies. It's an honor and pleasure to be here today to share my story as an Albertan who has adopted four children from government care. For my husband, Eric, and I, adoption was our first choice when it came time to build our family. We knew there were so many children who needed a loving home, especially older children and children in government care. We truly felt God's calling to do this. We educated ourselves about how to best support children with complex needs and trauma, and made sure they felt secure and safe. We had so much emotional support and access to resources through children's services. The support has truly been exceptional. The benefit of adopting children from within Alberta is that it made it easier to keep small and big connections for our adopted children, like keeping their same school and family doctor, and staying in touch with their birth families, communities, and culture. Adoption has been an incredible blessing for our family. Adoption gave our kids a loving family who treasures them, advocates for them, and will be there for them, for years to come. We work to instill trust, so that they know they can count on us, no matter what comes, their way. For myself and Eric, being adoptive parents has, quite simply, been an amazing experience. We have cherished the opportunity to pour into our kids and encourage them and love them each and every day. Seriously, I see my kids as the greatest gift and having the privilege of being their mom is something I will never take for granted. The beauty of our collective story is that adoption made the six of us a family and it has truly been the greatest journey of our lives. 
We see it as the utmost privilege and joy to have our kids in our lives. The supports government has announced today will make this journey possible for many more children and Albertans. Thank you for that, Minister Amory. For other Albertans considering adoption as a way to start or grow your family, I highly recommend adopting from government care. While older child adoption and parenting kids who have experienced complex trauma is not always an easy path, welcoming, loving, and parenting our children has been the most rewarding life experience for us. To be their mom is truly a gift. That's what adoption gave to us. Thank you for having me here today, and allowing me to share my story. Thank you so much, um, Jenna and Eric, for, for that. And that brings us to the end of the formal part of this announcement. We'll now move over to question and answers from the media. Um, I invite the media to ask one question and one follow-up from the room, and then we'll move over to the phone lines. Uh, operator, do we have reporters in queue online? There are no reporters in queue at the moment. As a reminder, if you do have a question, please press star one. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just kind of need some nuts and bolts to save me from the um, the, so <coughs> There was 6000 and then a $4,000 credit. Is that, is that so, in theory, so if somebody adopts, government will kick in $10,000? Is that the way I'm hearing it? So the $6,000 is provided as a grant to our licensed adoption agencies in this province to help offset the cost to that particular family uh, involved in adoptions. What we're seeing is that adoption is an expensive and lengthy process, and certainly even if it's done from within Alberta, it is uh, costs somewhere between eleven dollars and $15,000 in total. So what we decided to do is uh, provide the one-time grant to help offset some of those expenses so that we did not um, have the component of financial uh, financial pressures uh, swaying people's decision in, in making uh, or deciding to adopt. The tax credit is the, the one that families can claim on their 2024 tax return should they complete their adoption this year. So effectively, um, you've got a $6,000 actual grant and a $4,000 tax credit. And can you just describe the, describe the need for this? How is, how is this going to help? Well, I mean, you know, looking at the statistics and seeing uh, the expenses that are involved with uh, with adoptions and the complications as well, there are it's a long and difficult and challenging process. So what we're trying to do here is alleviate some of those pressures. We're making it a little bit more streamlined. We're reducing the time that it takes. We are including these financial grants to help offset some of the expenditures that families are incurring with the adoption process. There are a number of adoption uh, expenses involved um, that these uh, this grant I think will will help directly. Address. Address. Any more questions on the floor? Uh, and do you know how many people, how many kids are adopted every year in Alberta? I certainly do have those statistics. If we look at the total number of adoptions in the 2021 2022 year, we had a total of 417 adoptions, but that includes step parent private adoptions. It includes government adoptions, licensed agency adoptions, and international adoptions. And that number uh, that number appears to have increased from 358 in the 2020 to 2021 year. Wonderful. Um, so we'll check once more online. If we have any reporters, please join the queue to ask a question. Operator, any reporter on the line? guess not. Um, that brings us to the end of this announcement. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to Adoption Options for hosting us and for putting on this wonderful display. I know the work that you do is tremendously rewarding and I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. Uh, can I yes, sir. So I'm just reading through this really quickly here. So it says it's about 5,000 adopted children in Alberta who have already found a forever family and future adopted children will be eligible for these benefits. 
5,000 in what period? I don't know what statistic you're looking at. Um, I'm just looking at your, what you just sent out. Um, it says about 5,000 adopted children in Alberta have already found their forever family and future adopted children will be eligible. Understood. Yeah, I see that now. Thank you. The 5,000 adopted children in this province will benefit from some of the, um, the, the supplementary health benefits that we have agreed to provide uh, as a new initiative. The um, ongoing and future um, credits to to taxes and the uh the grant will apply to the new adoptions on a come forward basis so the five thousand children go back to correct period? correct and what period well they'll they'll they will uh they will f uh, impact any child under the age of 18 who has been through the adoption process all right thank you very much so we're basically talking the future now. So there's two components here. The supplementary health benefits will impact those children who have been adopted through licensed government agencies or government care, or from government care. And the tax incentives and the grant will impact children who are being adopted currently or in the future.